Welcome to today's journey through time and place as we explore one of the United Kingdom's most fascinating and often misunderstood regions, Wales. You may have heard someone refer to Wales as a county, but is that really accurate? Spoiler alert, it's not. But the reasons why are rich with history, culture, and more than a few quirks. So whether you're a tourist planning a visit, a history buff, or just curious about the geography of the UK, stay tuned. This will be a deep dive into all things Welsh. Before we can answer the question of whether Wales is a county, let's first clarify what Wales actually is. Wales is one of the four countries that make up the United Kingdom, alongside England, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. That's right, a country, not a county. But here's where things get tricky. Unlike fully independent countries, Wales shares a lot of its governance with the UK, particularly in areas like defense and foreign policy. Yet Wales also has its own devolved government that handles education, health, and culture. So while Wales is technically a country, it doesn't function exactly like an independent nation state. In short, calling Wales a county is like calling a dragon a lizard. Sure, they're kind of related, but you're missing a lot of the story. To understand why Wales is its own country, we have to go back, way back. The area now known as Wales has been inhabited for thousands of years, with evidence of prehistoric settlers and ancient tribes like the Celts who played a major role in shaping Welsh identity. The Romans conquered what is now England and Wales around 43 AD, but the mountainous terrain of Wales proved difficult for the Roman Empire to fully control. After the fall of the Roman Empire, Wales became a patchwork of small, independent kingdoms like Gwynedd, Powys, and Dyfed. These kingdoms often fought against invading forces from England, particularly after the Norman Conquest in 1066. However, it wasn't until the 13th century that the region we now call Wales was formally annexed by England under King Edward I. So, if Wales was annexed by England, you might wonder, how can it still be a country and not just a county within England? Good question. The answer lies in a series of political events that shaped Wales' relationship with England. In 1536 and 1543, the laws in Wales Acts were passed under King Henry VIII, formally uniting Wales with England in terms of administration. These acts essentially dissolved the remaining Welsh legal system and divided Wales into counties, just like England. It even required English to be the official language of law and government. Imagine being Welsh at the time. Not only are you suddenly told that your country is now part of England, but you're also expected to speak a language that's not yours. Talk about an identity crisis. However, despite these laws, the Welsh people never stopped identifying as a distinct group with their own culture and traditions. Over time, Wales became more integrated with England politically, but retained a strong cultural identity. Now let's zoom in on the geography of Wales. It's a land of rugged mountains, sweeping coastlines, and vast open countryside. But Wales is also divided into counties, just like the rest of the UK. So what gives? Wales has 22 local authorities that are responsible for local governance, and these are often referred to as counties or county boroughs. They handle things like education, local transport, and community services. However, these modern counties are not to be confused with the traditional historic counties of Wales, like Glamorgan, Denbyshire, and Montgomeryshire. These historic divisions existed long before the modern administrative boundaries we have today. One of the most distinctive things about Wales is its language, Welsh. Known as Simreg in Welsh, it's one of the oldest living languages in Europe, and it's very much alive today, spoken by over 700,000 people. During the centuries of English dominance, the Welsh language suffered greatly. At one point, it was even seen as a backward or rural language. But in the 20th century, Wales experienced a cultural revival. Thanks to government policies and grassroots movements, Welsh became recognized as an official language alongside English in 1993. And if you're visiting Wales, don't be surprised if you struggle with the pronunciation. Welsh place names are famously long and filled with letters that can be a tongue twister for English speakers. 
Try saying, Lanfer Pwingle Gogri Kurn Drobwal Lantisilio Go Go Gok three times fast, or even just once. Identity in Wales is about much more than political boundaries or language. For many Welsh people, their identity is tied to the land, the myths, and the unique way of life that's developed here over centuries. The Welsh are fiercely proud of their culture, from their distinctive music and poetry to their national sport, rugby. The Eisteddfod, a centuries-old festival of Welsh music, poetry, and performance, is a perfect example of how Welsh identity has endured through the ages. While the political landscape may have changed, the cultural heart of Wales beats stronger than ever. After all, any country that can hold a singing competition for several hundred years has to be doing something right. One of the biggest changes in modern Welsh history came in 1999 with the establishment of the Welsh Parliament, known today as Sened Simru. Devolution gave Wales its own legislative body, allowing it to make decisions on key issues like education, health and the environment. While Wales is still very much part of the UK, the Welsh Parliament has the power to pass laws on many important aspects of Welsh life. This has been a major step in recognizing Wales as more than just a region within the UK, but a country with its own voice. And let's be honest, what's more official than having your own Parliament building with a cool modern design? So now that we've clarified that Wales is indeed a country, not a county, Let's talk about why you should visit. Wales is a treasure trove of natural beauty, historical landmarks, and rich culture. First up is Snowdonia National Park, home to Mount Snowdon, the highest peak in Wales. Whether you're an avid hiker or just want to take a scenic train ride to the summit, this is a must-see for any visitor. And let's not forget the many castles dotting the Welsh landscape. Conwy Castle, Carnarfon Castle, and Harlech Castle are just a few of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites that tell the story of Wales' medieval past. Of course, no visit would be complete without experiencing Welsh culture. Head to Cardiff, the capital, where you'll find the iconic Millennium Stadium and the National Museum of Wales, or explore the charming market towns of Abergavenny and Heian Wye. Wales' economy has undergone some significant transformations over the centuries. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, Wales was a powerhouse of coal mining and heavy industry. The valleys of South Wales were once filled with coal mines, steelworks, and bustling industrial towns. At its peak, Welsh coal fueled not only the British Empire, but industries around the world. Towns like Merthyr Tydfil and Swansea were industrial giants. However, the decline of coal mining in the late 20th century marked a major economic shift for Wales. Today, you're more likely to find a high-tech startup than a coal mine in many parts of Wales, although you'll never escape the nostalgia for those black gold days. Nowadays, the Welsh economy is diverse and increasingly focused on modern industries. Key sectors include aerospace, electronics, renewable energy, and creative industries. Tourism also plays a huge role with people flocking to see Wales' natural beauty and historic sites. And let's not forget agriculture. Sheep farming is still an important part of rural life here. With more sheep than people, it's no surprise that Welsh lamb is world-renowned. Now let's dive a little deeper into the soul of Wales, its culture. Wales is often called the land of song, and for good reason. Music has always been central to Welsh life, from ancient folk songs to modern pop stars. The Welsh choral tradition is world famous, and you'll often hear the harmonies of a male voice choir echoing through the valleys. In fact, the National Eisteddfod, a yearly festival celebrating Welsh culture, is one of the oldest and largest arts festivals in Europe. It features poetry, music, and performances, a true celebration of Welsh identity. And if you're in Wales during a rugby match, prepare yourself. Welsh rugby isn't just a sport, it's practically a religion. The whole country seems to come to a standstill when the Welsh national team plays, especially if it's against England. Rugby represents more than just athleticism for the Welsh. It's about pride, history, and the underdog spirit that resonates deeply with the people of Wales. 
course, no country is complete without its symbols and myths. In Wales, the dragon is the most iconic national symbol. The red dragon, or Yidrag Goch, has been a symbol of Wales for centuries and proudly flies on the Welsh flag. According to legend, red dragon represents the Welsh people, fighting off invaders symbolized by the white dragon of England. This myth stems from the ancient tale found in the Mabinogion, a collection of medieval Welsh stories. The Welsh flag with its fiery dragon is a powerful reminder of the resilience and enduring spirit of Wales. Plus, let's face it, having a dragon on your flag is just objectively cooler than most other national symbols. Wales is also steeped in Arthurian legend. Many historians and folklorists believe that King Arthur, the legendary British leader, may have had connections to Wales, with several locations in the country linked to his mythos. You'll find ancient stone circles, castles, and mysterious landscapes that spark the imagination. As Wales moves into the 21st century, it continues to balance its rich traditions with modern progress. The Welsh people are deeply proud of their history and culture, but they're also forward-thinking, making strides in renewable energy, technology, and education. Whether it's leading the charge in sustainable energy or maintaining the Welsh language through innovative educational programs, Wales is a country that knows how to honor its past while building for the future. And let's not forget, all while enjoying a good cup of tea and a rugby match on the side. So let's circle back to our original question, is Wales a county? The answer as we've learned is a resounding no. Wales is far more than a mere county. It's a country with its own language, culture, history, and people. A proud nation within the United Kingdom that stands distinct in both character and identity. From its ancient Celtic roots to its modern day innovations, Wales is a place where the past and the present coexist in perfect harmony. Whether you're planning a visit or simply curious about the history and geography of this incredible land, Wales offers something truly unique. So the next time someone asks, is Wales a county? You'll have plenty to say. Just be sure to mention the dragons. They always make the conversation more interesting. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the history, geography, and identity of Wales. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more explorations into fascinating places around the world. Until next time, or as the Welsh say, Diolch yn Fawr Thank you, and goodbye.